During the conversation between Neo and the Architect in Matrix Reloaded, we learned something significant. There have been many versions of the Matrix. The issue with the Matrix, according to the Architect, was found by the intuitive program known as the Oracle. If I am the father of the Matrix, she would undoubtedly be its mother. The Oracle. This program added the illusion of choice in the Matrix. Humans would think, at an unconscious level, that they were making decisions. But these decisions were false. False choices that would keep them under control in the Matrix. As I was saying, she stumbled upon a solution whereby nearly 99% of all test subjects accepted the program as long as they were given a choice, even if they were only aware of the choice at a near unconscious level. Understanding that this is how the Oracle operates, it is possible that not only was she never on the side of the humans, but that she has been manipulating everything that happened from the beginning. Movie watchers would identify Agent Smith or the Architect as the main villains of the films. However, if we think more objectively, this title may belong to a single entity, the mastermind willing to sacrifice the Matrix itself to achieve her goals. Using her method of control, false choices. What was the Oracle's master plan? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. We would like to thank you all, all of you 10,000 Matrix fans. Your support is what motivates us to make more content. Because of this, we would like to introduce you all to our new channel, Mandalorian Universe. There, we will be uploading theories, news, and everything related to the world of the Mandalorian. Please go there and subscribe. Link will be in the description below. Thank you again for the 10,000 subscribers. The Architect explained to Neo that although he was an anomaly, it didn't mean that he had escaped the Matrix control. They had taken steps to deal with the anomaly. As the Architect said, the problem has always been choice. In the first film, we can see the influence of the Oracle in everything that happens. Neo made 10 crucial decisions throughout the movie. Every choice is directly caused by the Oracle to make him believe that he was making the decisions, that he was in control of his fate. But really, each of those decisions were inevitably leading him to meet the Architect. You may wonder, what were those decisions? The first was following the White Rabbit. This decision was suggested by Trinity, who in turn was developing an emotional connection with Neo after the Oracle told her that she would fall in love with the One. Everything the Oracle told me has come true. The Oracle told me that I would fall in love and that that man, the man that I loved would be the One. Trinity being the person who meets Neo at the club was on purpose. The Oracle sent Trinity because she wanted her to fall in love with Neo. Later, the Oracle insinuates to Neo that Trinity liked him. I can see why she likes you. Who? Not too bright, though. It was not a fluke, nor an accident. It was part of her method of control. The second choice was to choose to be at work on time or find another job. The time has come to make a choice, Mr. Anderson. Either you choose to be at your desk on time from this day forth, or you choose to find yourself another job. This ultimatum that the boss imposes on Thomas is very similar to the option that Agent Smith presents to him during the interrogation. It is as if Neo's employer was also a part of the system. The third choice was to follow Morpheus' instructions to escape the building or let himself get caught by the agents. There are two ways out of this building. One is that scaffold, the other is in their custody. You take a chance either way, I leave it to you. <laughs> Morpheus is operating under the assumption that Neo is the one, because the Oracle led him to believe that. When Morpheus tried to help Neo escape, he was doing so under the Oracle's influence. It didn't matter if Neo escaped or got arrested, the result was going to be the same. He was eventually going to wake up from the Matrix, Again, it is a delusion of choice. 
The fourth choice is when Smith requests Neo to help him catch Morpheus. Before the interrogation even began, we can see that the Architect is watching him. This proves that the Architect knew that Neo was the anomaly before developing any of his powers. The fifth choice is when Neo goes to the Adam Street Bridge. Number six is Neo entering the car and agreeing to have his body examined. Right now, there's only one rule. Our way or the highway. The seventh and possibly the most important choice is the red pill or the blue pill. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. As we mentioned in other videos, the blue pill as well as the red pill are a part of the same system of control. It is an illusion of choice. Even though Neo chose the red pill, he remained under the architect's control. Morpheus eventually takes Neo to meet the Oracle at her home. There he meets the Spoon Boy, who tells him that the Spoon does not exist. This influences another choice that Neo would make in the future, accepting that he is the one that can manipulate the Matrix. Accepting that the Spoon was not real is choice number eight. Neo finally meets the Oracle. She knew who he was before even looking at him. She would offer him a seat, but she knew he wouldn't take it to not worry about the vase before Neo broke it. It is as if the Oracle knows everything that's going to happen before they happened. How did you know? Oh, what's really going to bake your noodle later on is, would you still have broken it if I hadn't said anything? From Neo's perspective, fate or destiny does not exist. He is in control of his future. But the Oracle scoffs at that perception. Everything she tells him indicates that she knows all that will happen in the future. That's because everything is predetermined. She tells Neo that he will have to make a choice. You're going to have to make a choice. In the one hand, you'll have Morpheus's life. And in the other hand, you'll have your own. This is incompatible. You can't see the future determine everything that will happen and simultaneously offer people a choice. The Oracle offers Neo the choice because he doesn't have one. When she tells him that he must choose between Morpheus's life or his own, she is telling him what will happen to instigate Neo to act. I don't know. I, this can't be just coincidence. It can't be. What are you talking about? The Oracle. She told me this would happen. She told me that I would have to make a choice. If the Oracle had not informed Neo about Morpheus, he may have chosen not to save him. He may have not traded his life for Morpheus's. The illusion of choice. Before Neo leaves, the Oracle assures to him that he is in control of his life. Yet that is not true. Her saying this seems more like a mockery than advice. Don't worry about it. As soon as you step outside that door, you'll start feeling better. You'll remember you don't believe in any of this fate crap. You're in control of your own life. Remember. Choice number nine is, of course, Neo saving Morpheus. After visiting the Oracle, the crew is betrayed by Cypher and ambushed by the agents. Most of the crew is killed off. Tank gets revenge on Cypher, but Morpheus is captured by the agents. Neo remembers the Oracle's words. Even though Neo doesn't believe to be the one, he risks his life to save Morpheus. After Morpheus is rescued by Neo and Trinity, the trio goes to the nearest exit, but Agent Smith finds them. Neo is left alone to fight the agent, or run. He chooses to confront Smith, but he hasn't accepted who he is yet. Agent Smith continuously calls him by his fake name, Mr. Anderson. He responds to the agent that his name is Neo and manages to defeat him. Kind of. After Neo is chased to the heart of the city, the agents catch up to him and kill him. Just as the Oracle said, one of them was going to die. But thanks to Trinity's confession, Neo comes back to life and finally believes that he is the one. He destroys Agent Smith and escapes the Matrix. 
completing his final choice. Throughout the entire film, Neo believed that he was making all of the decisions, but in reality, everything was manipulated by the Oracle, him waiting for a sign, one of them dying, and Neo's next life. All of this the Oracle predicted. Now, the fundamental piece of the Oracle's manipulation of Neo has always been the person that he admired the most, Morpheus. Don't take my word for it. Listen to the Oracle herself. What's funny? Morpheus. He, uh... He almost had me convinced. I know. Poor Morpheus. Without him, we're lost. But who is this we that she is referring to? After watching The Matrix, we all assumed that she meant humanity. But after her true functions were revealed in Matrix Reloaded, the we didn't mean the humans. It was the machines. Without Morpheus, the machines would have lost control of the integral anomaly. Her plan went without a hitch. The Oracle's purpose was clear, to make Neo believe that he was in control over his life, but that each choice he made still leads him to the path of the One. The movie ends with Neo talking on the phone to the ones in control, warning them that he was going to show the people the truth. And for the first time, Neo is the one who gives a choice to the enemy. Yet it does not matter. The Matrix is still in control. The choices that Neo made were all planned. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. The fact that Neo ends the film talking about how the choice is up to them, that is the machines, shows that he still believes in choices and that the Oracle's control over Neo was completed. The Oracle is undoubtedly one of the most cunning and interesting characters in the saga. But do you agree? Were all of Neo's choices false? Is the Oracle in control over his destiny? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.